Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today played in the NFL for 16 seasons and was one of the most dominant defensive players in the game. He's a Super Bowl champ and a seven-time Pro Bowler. Dwight Freeney is here. So good to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. So this is kind of crazy. The knock on you early was that you were too small. Yep. Did you hear those things and did it motivate you? No, absolutely. I mean, that's one of those things that, you know, you just put that on your shoulder like a chip on the block, something that you want to go after. You know, something that always will motivate you when things are down or when you don't feel like working out or you don't feel like, you know, doing the things that you're supposed to do. You kind of remember those things. And I've always said, it's like, look, I'm undersized, but I'm not playing basketball. I'm not out here trying to grab <laughs> rebounds. You know, what do I need to be 6'5 and 6'6 six, six, for? You know, I'm, I'm a 6'1 guy and I have natural leverage and I'm going to use that to my advantage. And, and listen, I'm going to bring something up here. I got to just full disclosure. I do like Tom Brady. Oh, I do like the Patriots. Good guy. Yeah, good guy. Good also, guy. the first guy you sacked when you were playing at Syracuse. That's actually the, right. The first guy I've ever hit. Yeah. In a game period. Oh, gosh. Was Tom Brady. When he was at Michigan. Yes, he was a backup. Wow. The first starter ended up coming out of the game, and he happened to be coming in the game. I wasn't playing my natural position. I was playing like a, a defensive end or more like a nose tackle, which is crazy uh -huh. in, that, in that scheme that we had. And I ended up hitting him and, and causing like a turnover. In, oh, in my first game, deal? my first game as in 1998 versus Michigan. Did you have any idea at the time like that he was really good or you just thought of him as any well, other backup? Well, that's the thing is, I mean, if you're a backup coming in, mm -hmm. you know, you're not regarded as a great player. You know, you're just a backup to the starter. So no one's thinking he's a great player. <laughs> no one's definitely thinking I'm a great player at this point. You know, I'm not starting. I'm a, a, a rookie or freshman coming in and being able to get on the field and making a play. So you hit him again, obviously, right, in the NFL. Four times. But is there, so what was the difference when you hit him in college back then versus in the NFL? Well, it, it, it meant so much more. In when, the NFL? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Because, you know, there was no prestige behind, you know, he wasn't the Tom Brady, you know, and I wasn't the me. It was just <laughs> two guys, you know, playing in, in college in 1998, trying to make their way into the NFL or help their team win in college. So something else happened while you were at Syracuse that almost yeah. changed your life. Yeah. What is that story? It was crazy. All right, so the very first, I guess the biggest game I've ever had in my whole entire career was against Virginia Tech and Michael Vick. Okay, I ended up sacking him four and a half times that game. Okay, on one of the sacks, he actually ducks and he hits me in my spleen. Well, that Monday, I woke up and everything was in slow motion. So I ended up stopping by our facility, the doctor's facility. And they sat down and they looked at me and said, okay, we'll do some blood work and some blood tests and stuff like that. And you know, Dwight, you have a fever. I said, oh, okay, got a fever. That's what's going on. I must you know, be getting sick or something like that, even though this was a feeling that I've never felt before. So they gave me the, you know, antibiotics, I go home, I start like feeling like my skin is popping. Mm. Like literally, like if you think of cooking fried chicken or whatever, it and the oil, and, hot. And, and how the oil hits your yeah. skin, sometimes you get too close or you get a little water in the oil mixture and it kind of pops. Sure. Well, I was feeling that throughout my whole entire body. Oh. Later on that day, my lymph nodes in my neck and everything started to blow up. A couple of days later, my pigmentation starts to go and I'm starting to thin, my hair is starting to thin out. Now this is like through the process of about a week oh my gosh. that's going on. And I keep going back to see these, you know, the doctors and they're like, we don't know what's happening. Let's get a CAT scan. Okay, so I, you know, do the CAT scan and that takes a little bit of time for that to, you know, come for results. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. I have a fever still of like 100, 200, 300. That's consistent. So then they end up quarantining me. They bring me home. I'm sitting there on my bed and I'm looking up. I'm in and out because I'm very tired. Um, I have a, that temperature. Come to find out through the test, they found out, Dwight, you're bleeding internally. Uh, from Michael Vick. From a quarterback hitting me. 
somehow I hit the quarterback, but I damaged myself. Right. Fast forward three years, once I'm all better, mm -hmm. I find out, you know, I get sick again. Well, just regular, you know, flu or what have you. I take whatever they prescribe as a drug, and all of a sudden that same sensation comes back of my skin popping. Come to find out that I'm allergic to penicillin. I have now dropped about 25 pounds, okay? And now I'm obviously out for the year, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it just completely kind of put things in perspective as, as far as my life is concerned because, you know, you're talking about having the greatest game of your career or your life, and then two days later, you're fighting for your life. Yeah. You know, and I ended up bouncing back from all that, but it was it was crazy. So when you would see Michael Vick in the NFL, did that kind of bring back bad memories yeah, for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. It brings up bad, bad memories and good memories. It's funny. It's because, you know, when I see him, I'm like, you know, the first two things I think is, man, this guy's fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to you know, have to chase him down. But then the second thing I'm thinking is kind of like, you know what? I had a great game against him, but right after that game, you yeah. know, I got sick. So you became known for the spin move. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Yeah, that's a funny story. You know, so I used to play basketball. Mm -hmm. Okay, I used to be a power forward. Okay, and I would always get called for traveling every single time. I would get the ball in the post. I would do a little drop step move, and my feet. I guess I guess my feet were shuffling, but I would get called for traveling all the time. So I played football as well. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, my drop step move, I thought, hey, that's a pretty good move. You know, I mean, I, no one could stop me on the basketball court other than, I guess, myself because I get called for traveling. But I felt <laughs> like that was a great little move. So, you know, when we got on the football field, you know, I think it was in practice one day. You know, it was kind of like this is back in the day when and one mixtapes were, yes. were out. So this is when everybody's doing the right. crazy basketball moves. And so you're doing a little basketball tape. and football. Yes. I get so it. now okay. when I get out on the football field and the practice field, you know, I'm trying to emulate kind of N1 basketball in a sense. I end up incorporating that into my football game and spinning on the football field. Huh. Who did you model your game after? Was it a basketball player at this point? <laughs> Not, well, you know what? It, honestly, it, the one guy that I loved growing up and cried when he retired uh -huh. was Lawrence Taylor. And, you know, Lawrence Taylor had a famous move where it was a tomahawk swipe where he comes and as he's getting the sack, he would come down and swipe and, and hit the ball. Mm -hmm. So it would be a cause fumble. And I 100% got that from him. Well, speaking of sacks, you had 125 and a half sacks yeah. in your career. That's quite a bit. Is there any quarterback that you didn't sack that kind of haunts you still, <laughs> that you wish you yeah, got him. Yeah, that's the funny That's the funny one. You know, it's actually Peyton Manning. It's kind of like, you know, every day in practice, we would always say, yeah. you know, I would love to hit Peyton. And, you know, even though we know we can't hit him, you know, and, and the coaches are, you know, it's funny when you're on the field with Peyton, you know, if you are within five yards of Peyton, the coaches are all yelling, get away from the quarterback, stop. You know, now we have a job to do in practice. Sure. We're, we're working on our craft. So we beat our offensive tackle, our offensive guard, our offensive lineman, and we get back to the quarterback. Now we know we can't, we know we can't yep. hit him. But if you get anywhere close to him, they're screaming at you saying, back away from the quarterback, because then obviously we don't want to hurt him. All right, quickly, who is your favorite quarterback to sack? At, of all time? Yes, of all time. Tom Brady. I would say that just because of, of the prestige of what he is. All right, fine. You got to yeah. do that to me.